Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always on this program, first in the Northern California Bay Area, world famous juggler Greg Larson. How you doing, Greg? Fantastic. How about yourself, Ozzy? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm prepared to get the uh, the grief that I anticipated for picking this movie. We'll find out why momentarily. Also okay. with us, Flesh Room producer Todd. How you doing, Todd? Good evening. Uh, <laughs> and he returns with the thumbs up. Were those finger guns this time? Oh, boy. Oh, Lord. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this week we are reviewing and discussing... Burn After Reading, which was released on September 12th, 2008, rated R with a runtime of 96 minutes, written and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. Todd, do you have a trailer available? Yes, sir, I do. And it's a red band. I'm excited. <laughs> Medola found like this CD just lying in a locker. On the floor there. Yeah, and it's these <laughs> files, man. I'm uncomfortable with this. It was just lying there. You should put up a note in the ladies' locker room. Put up a note? Hello? Did anybody lose their secret CIA shit? I don't think so. <laughs> this is some senior guy who screwed the pooch. This could put a big dent in my surgeries. Big time. I have gone just about as far as I can go with this body. Right. Hello. Osborne Cox? Yes. I thought you might be worried about the security of your shit. I've been working on... <laughs> You know what you're engaged in is blackmail. I'm a mere good Samaritan. Give me the CD <laughs> and the song and I'll the the money, dickwad. Where's the money? He didn't give it to me. Who's <laughs> far? It's messy. He is screwing Mrs. Cox. Pull around the corner, we'll do it in the back. That's so cool. Back of the car, <laughs> not the rear entry situation. <laughs> That's just a taste. PC or a Mac? Uh, the Russians? Why would they go to the Russians? You can be a spy too, madam. <laughs> we don't really know what anyone is after. Report back to me when, uh, I don't know, when it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Face with the FBI on this dead body. No, no, God, no. Burn the body. Okay. That that was the trailer for Burn After Reading Again. Released on September 12, 2008, rated R, starring John Malkovich, Tilda Swinton, George Clooney, Francis McDormand. And Brad Pitt. Uh, initial thoughts, and of course, written and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. Initial thoughts on this. I remember seeing this in the theater, and it hit home for me really early. Specifically because if you're not familiar, the character of Osborne Cox goes by the name Ozzy. And the first scene is people trying to calm Ozzy down. <laughs> so... I was naturally on board from the very beginning. I figured it was because Ozzy loves really. the Cox. So, oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but genuinely though, uh, aside from that, what I ultimately admire about this movie is one thing leading to another, leading to another, leading to another, and that's that's ultimately the key to great writing is everything leads into so many other things. <clears throat> so. It's so much stuff going on, but it's all stemmed and connected together. It's a giant cluster, but it's enjoyable to watch. Wait, it's a giant cluster, but it's that... a giant cluster, comma, but it's fun to okay. watch. Got it. Okay. Sorry. How about your initial thoughts on this? So um, this 
to me has like had a moment for me like four rooms did um in which and i granted the first time so i watched this twice which don't normally do with with their films um but the first time watching it i wasn't like a hundred percent engaged with the film um just was having to do a couple other things at the time i go once i kind of got through it i go oh i know that this is one of those ones you like should really focus whole time through and like i see the type of film this is and now that i've kind of got the gist of it like i know what to what kind of vision to go in with and um so seeing this the second time first time i was like okay this has this is some good stuff but the second time around was that your first time ever watching it it was that was so i had no no clue about this film sure um and it really like it it hit home in a a lot of great spots and and i just really like once you got that like okay go in big lebowski you know like that (laughs) kind of mindset you know, four rooms kind of like everything's going to all like have all these great intertwining like moments and like have a great wrap up, you know, like, yeah, this, this has been a, it was a fantastic ride. Todd. Also my first time watching it. Oh, okay. Um, I think it might've hit better in 2008 for me, but I had a really good time with it. I, I like, like you said, how, how it all comes together and how it all makes sense. The thing I didn't like was I'd like to see the movie from the trailer um, because I didn't find this movie laugh out loud funny. I liked the movie quite a bit, but I never laughed audibly. I may have laughed a few times in my head. So, I mean, that's one thing. Like Coen Brothers a lot of times are a little bit more subdued, but you still have laugh out loud moments and stuff like Raising Arizona or Big Lebowski. This one, I didn't, it didn't, yeah, it didn't have that for me. But that said, I still really liked it as a movie. Okay. But it's never going to be it like, oh, I want to watch something funny. I'm never going to be like, for an after read. Right. Right. So. I don't, I don't know if it, because for me, there was, I had some laugh out loud moments. And again, I don't know if it's because I have a special kinship, kinship with the main character that when he gets upset, like, I almost like feel that. You know, or like when a character says, oh, for blank's sake, Ozzy, like I've heard that before. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's wow. laugh out loud for me. <laughs> okay. But there, but there's there's still moments where it's like it's almost like I, I think it's because. Uh, and I, I, I can't I guess it's not really fair to use this argument because, Todd, I know you're a fan of dark humor, but there's jokes in here that made me completely laugh out loud but i guess i can't say because it was dark like i mean when somebody dies and you laugh based on the build you know what i mean it could be a really big pop. and i remember in the theater it was a big it was a big pop for that when when that moment happened uh so maybe uh, maybe maybe I'm, I'm I'm going back to that initial viewing when I saw it in the theater. I'm thinking back of like the fun and that, I had, and that's a communal thing, the experience. And yeah, I, I, like I said, if I would have saw it in 2008 in a theater, my feelings mm-hmm. could be different. But watching it at home, like there's no one else laughing, so I got gotcha. you. Okay, so if you had to pick a favorite moment, not necessarily a moment that made you laugh, you know. But it like, made me laugh in the trailer, so okay. <laughs> I'll give it that. That is, of course, the 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 back joke, <laughs> the butt oh. sex joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm 12. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was the right. wink and the gun. <laughs> oh Lord, Greg. Oh man, there were a few of them that like got me pretty good on this one but i think just because the delivery was so fantastic uh appearances can be deceptive (laughs) (laughs) that line and because he repeated it i don't know why it made me laugh so hard but it was delivered just so well brad pitt's character like first off the rogues gallery that this movie has of like wonderful actors and actresses like awesome but yeah, that moment with Brad Pitt was just delivered perfectly. 
the funny thing about his hairstyle, this was on one of the uh, featurettes on the DVD. The mm -hmm. hair and hair and makeup person had said that when he had he had come in and he had just got done with a like a shampoo commercial or a hair product commercial, and it, it had actually left his hair in the way you saw in the movie. Oh wow! And he says, "What do you want to change it to?" And she looked at it, it's like. Actually, I think this works. <laughs> so the hair <laughs> you did. see is, was a result of a bad shampoo commercial. Uh, but the thing, what was funny is when Clooney was being interviewed, he says, anytime that I feel I could be the biggest knucklehead on a set, there I see Brad Pitt in a pair of spandex shorts and think, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, specifically, that, that role that Pitt plays, the role of Chad is... I mean, it, it, it's almost like the comedic relief of the comedy because mm -hmm. he, he, I mean, you don't really see him in a role like this ever. And mm -hmm. I, I actually, I can't recall the last time you've seen him in a role in a role like this. He's always like at least a smart guy or like the suave guy when he's playing complete dork like this, he can tell he had a, a blast with it. And Kevin Smith cameos. Kevin Smith cameos. He does kind of get to be a dork and okay. In, in his, yeah. Well, I mean, but actually like, like, but to your point cameos, not like an actual yeah. role given to him in a movie, right? His facial expressions when getting in the car, cause there's two, there's two shots of his facial expressions where yeah. he has like a, he has the feeling of excitement and like, mm -hmm. Oh, this is, I'm in some like really, you know, deep CIA stuff. And then he remembers like, oh, I got to look tough. <laughs> like just <Yeah. laughs> you see the, the look on his face change. It happens twice. There's two shots and the, you see stuff going on in his head. And then he re he re like uh, every single time I see the movie that always gets me every single time I'm in tears because yeah. of his facial expressions, how it, it morphs from one thing to another. And I don't know if, if this might be one of these, I mean, Greg, you, you said you saw it like twice. Uh, mm -hmm. How far off from one another was it? Like you finished it and you're like, you just put it on again or you just saved it for a few days later. It was, or... it was a couple hours. So okay. within the same day, not too far. Yeah. Okay. So for me, this is a kind of movie that I enjoy more each time I watch. Yeah. Like there was a couple of lines I noticed this time that I that had, hadn't really uh, caught me before, right? First, specifically when she's on the dating website and then she pulls up one guy and he says, well, this guy looks like he could not be a loser. And she says, well, does he have a sense of humor? And then the response is, well, his optometrist looks like he has a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> but just again, like to that Coen brothers, like just very subtle, like what these one liners but also a scene with Tilda Swinton when she's talking with, I can't remember the character's name, but George Clooney. And he kind of tells her to slow things down on, 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 or basically tells her not to hammer things down or basically ease the hammering down process. And she says, what do you mean hammering down? I don't hammer things down. She's literally doing that with her hand. <laughs> right. as she says, I don't hammer it. Like I don't hammer things down, which Again, like there's so I think there's moments in this movie that you'll appreciate on multiple viewings. I mean, I don't know if that'll be the case for Todd, but is would definitely is the was the case for me. And I think uh future viewings, I know what I'm getting into. Right. right. So you know what kind of mood you'll need yeah. to be in, and then it might hit different. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does for sure. Like yeah, I said, so I didn't dislike it, I did enjoy it. It just wasn't like laugh out loud comedy now okay so last week we did review serial mom right which has way more laugh out loud moments feels more like a farce to me too which is kind of like you know typically we kind of stay in that area this is a little a little different the connecting kind of keeps it in i don't know I don't want to say it's too smart for farce, but it kind of is. <laughs> well, I, I well, think it's it's a comedy. It's a comedy that you need to pay attention to, like to yeah. Greg's, Greg, yes. Greg's point. Like it's not a movie like you can just have on in the background and just like jump in, catch some gags, and then jump out. 
this right. is something you need to be invested in from start to finish. And it only has a runtime of 96 minutes. So it's not like you're sacrificing, they're, you know, a lot of time there. They're respecting your time. And that, that yes. counts for a lot. You did this same movie in 212. I probably wouldn't have liked it. It would have adored. It would have been like, do we need that extra 45? You know, like a lot of movies do now. Right. No, you're right. absolutely right. Uh, so every scene matters and every, there's something yeah. happening and, the the amount of things that just go on in such a small package you feel like you get a lot for your time's worth mm -hmm. so i th that goes into one of the reasons that listen you got to pay attention from start to finish or else things aren't going to hit as well at the end like the big reveal of the present or whatever he was working on man like okay that's something in the theater that like got the biggest like shock right Nobody yeah. expected that whatsoever. I'm not going to spoil it just in case anybody hasn't seen it. And it. Which, by the way, is available currently on HBO Max. I don't know if past the 23rd, their library is going to change. Or we told the police academy was on HBO Max. By the time that episode aired, it was already gone. Oh, come on, oh, man. It was like the first comment. Oh, man. Well, We're we sorry apologize. about that. Well, that's that's why I say as of this recording, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So as of this recording. May 14th, 2023, it is available on HBO Max. They're going to find that, I don't know, maybe our episodes are tricking off an algorithm or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, hey, guys, hold on a second. They reviewed Police Academy. We got to take it off now. Make people buy that stuff. <laughs> well, so we at least quite a few like to watch the movies we are talking about. So I understand that. I understand that. So. Unless Ozzy picks them. <laughs> well. Right, I, Ozzy. I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, <laughs> God, thumbs up. Oh, then he went to the gun. I think we're gonna be okay <sighs> with this one, considering how the main character's name is Ozzy. I don't think the streaming service sees much value to this movie. I know. My dad <laughs> alone, I had to bring down my rating. But uh, let's get into the ratings, because, <laughs> like I said, I just keep enjoying this movie more and more each time I see it, and I can't live it. I can't give it anything less than a five just because I have that much fun with it every time I watch it. It's never a bad time. Well, no, that's it's. I mean, I can't quite go that high up. Now, it's one of those situations where, am I rating this as a comedy? Am I rating this as just like, how much of a good time did I have with this? I'm just going to stick with, did I have a good time? It's still sticking at a four and a half for me. I had a lot of fun, especially that second time through. Um, I thought there were a lot of great wrap ups and situations um, when going through part of the wrap up again without revealing uh, what you find out and such. There's a moment where the state, I believe, of uh, Ozzy Cox, when you find out where he's at, there's an audible sigh that like made me laugh so hard. Just like there's there's just so many great little moments in this film um, that I have to at least give it a four and a half. Todd? I just, hope, I just hope his middle name is Loves the, but I, <laughs> I'm about, I'm not going to take off the point for the name of the character, but I am a three and a half with Room to Grow. So, okay. Uh, so, wait, it's wait, is that your rating or telling us too much information? <laughs> <laughs> that no, is but, it could be, could be both. You never know. <laughs> but I, I think that's interesting, though, with with you saying with room to grow, because I think you said you viewing it, me like I could enjoy this more later. And in I the think, right mood, a lot of that, you know, right. like, and I think that's really important to to you know to communicate just in case anybody watching yeah. is like, oh, you know, like uh i'm in the mood for xyz i want to like laugh out loud from start to finish this it is not going to be that movie for you but if you know hey i want to see a comedy where it's a messed up situation and i want to see what just what happens you know that kind of it's a humorous situation mm -hmm. based on how everything happens that's i mean it's pretty one thing going to, to another to another is the humor in it and right I almost did forget to mention this. I see here in my note that I don't have checked off here. Uh, the wardrobe person on one of the featurettes here, when Brad Pitt is wearing the suit, it was actually intended to give him an executive cut. They wanted to give him an ill-fitting suit because they wanted him 
to they wanted to portray that he didn't know how to dress properly. So the executive cut, if you're not familiar, is uh, it's bigger in the shoulders, or rather, it's it's even in the shoulders, but it's a bigger midsection. So it mm. looks oversized on him. That was intended. So if next time you're watching it, look at his suit or at Brad Pitt's suit. And if you're wondering, like, why do they give him such a big suit is because they wanted him to appear in an ill fitting suit because he doesn't know. Ultimately, nobody, <laughs> nobody knows what they're doing. Ultimately, that's the fun part. Except for Ozzy, he knows what he's doing. He does know what he's doing and really knows how to find a new set of keys. Yes, he does. <laughs> and I, th I think moving forward, anytime you guys give me any crap, I'm going to have to say this is a crucifixion. <laughs> Opening the movie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was our review of Burn After Reading. Like I said, as of this recording on May 14th, 2023, available on HBO Max, but of course, available for rent or purchase as well digitally, or you can purchase the DVD or Blu-ray as well. Greg and Todd. Oh, I should say we have some updates on the voting. Do we have any updates on the voting or voting is still ongoing? Should be able to vote right now. Oh, there's the <laughs> thumbs up again. So go check that out. Look how if far you're back not a... my thumb goes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Time to refill the ADD medication. Look what I can do. <laughs> Todd's losing it, ladies and gentlemen. So for Flesh Wound producer Todd and World Frame Struggler Greg Larson, I'm Ozzy V. And just lastly, if you haven't voted yet, go to patreon.com slash flash features to cast your vote and check out that film that we will review and discuss. All right, Todd, Todd's having Todd's gonna need to call somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, for Todd, Greg, and Ozzy, have a good night. We'll see you next week on Fleshman Farce.